Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. I've been jumping into some more rabbit holes as of late, and I'd like to share some stories of some more famous or infamous players of World of Warcraft. Double Agent is a Pandaren Shaman who did something very unique. He attained the maximum level, 110, without ever picking a faction or leaving the starting area for his race. Pandaren have a different introduction for World of Warcraft. You don't pick a faction upon creating a character. Instead, you first make a neutral, factionless character. And you pick your faction after a short series of quests. Normally, this process is done at around level 10 or so, but Double Agent found out that it was possible that you never needed to pick a faction, or even leave the starting area. He discovered that you could level to the max solely by gathering herbs and ore. The process is incredibly slow and tedious, but every expansion, he makes it a point to reach the new max level by gathering copper and peace bloom, and at the same time remaining neutral. Blizzard saw fit to reference him by putting an NPC named the Venerable Shaman in the Monk Order Hall, who patrols the area occasionally to mine some copper veins. Next on our list, we have Ian Bates, also affectionately known as the Redshirt Guy. In BlizzCon 2010, he brought up some lore issues regarding the Wildhammer clan. This was during the Cataclysm beta, and one of the Wildhammers, Falstead, was replaced by Kurdran as a representative of the Council of the Three Hammers, even though Varian Rin decided that Falstead was to be the representative. The game designer, Chris Metzen, incorrectly stated that Falstead was dead, to which the Redshirt Guy corrected him. No? No, he survived, and in fact, he it was the leader of Airy Peak in Vanilla WoW at, through Wrath of the Lich King. Right, of course. Right. Yeah, Alex, what's up with that? <laughs> thanks, thanks for pointing that out. We're going to get that fixed. Thank you. I bet. And in response, Blizzard corrected their mistake and replaced Kurdran with Falstead. And, as a nod to one fan's diligence, alongside Falstead is another NPC wearing a red tabard named the Wildhammer Fact Checker. And, funny enough, if you take him out as a horde, he does indeed have a chance to drop a red shirt. Today, Ian is now a writer for the Blizzard fan site, BlizzPlanet. Ever since the introduction of personal loot, ninja looting in World of Warcraft for the most part has been a thing of the past. But back during the early days, every other day you would read stories of guilds having their loot stolen by what were called ninja looters. Quite possibly the most infamous incident was when the guild Nevermind killed Gar in the Molten Core. The guild was celebrating a successful kill and were talking amongst themselves trying to figure out who gets what. Yeah, I want that ring. I do. All right. Who else, is, who else wants it other than Rogue? At the time, the way most guilds handled loot was through the Dragon Killing Point system, or DKP for short. Raiders would accumulate these points through raiding and doing guild activities, and they would then spend these points on items that dropped. Nevermind seemed to forgo the system, instead opting for the free-for-all looting option and then rolling against each other for the boss's loot. While this is much simpler than the DKP system, it of course leaves the guild open to thievery of any items that drop. Uh, Con, what are you what doing? The fuck? Oh my god! What the fuck? Oh my god! I'm going to kill myself right now. See ya. They were left in shock at this turn of events. I mean, who could possibly imagine that out of 40 random strangers on the internet, that someone might be untrustworthy? I, for one, am astonished. Like I said, this happened all the time, but this particular incident was one of the most infamous, even spawning a parody video. In the game, there exists a selection of items reserved for Game Masters, or GMs. They're primarily used for testing purposes, and have these rather overpowered properties tied to them. One of these items was a shirt called Martin Fury, which upon use, killed all enemies within a 30 yard radius. 
Here's a story of somehow, someway, this item fell into the hands of not a GM, but rather a normal, everyday player. Leroy Speltz was a player in the guild The Marvel Family on the US server Vecnalash. Like many others at the time, someone had hacked their way into his account and he had all of his items sold and characters deleted. As standard procedure, he paged a GM to have his account restored so he could get back to playing the game. His request was granted, but in the process of restoring his account, the GM had mistakenly sent him Martin Fury along with the rest of his items. Not being soulbound, Leroy sent this item over to his guild member, Karate Chop, and he did possibly the dumbest thing you could do. He used it. When Raid Night rolled around, they went on a Northrend world tour. Going through the entirety of the Old War Raid, the Obsidian Sanctum, and the Eye of Eternity, they one-shotted all of the bosses there and made it rain. Karate Chop was quite liberal with his use of the GM item, and the guild claimed several world firsts in the span of an hour. Obviously, people figured out that something fishy was going on. The Marvel family wasn't a hardcore progression guild, and to see them rolling through everything was suspicious to say the least. Well, word got out about Martin Fury, and Blizzard probably in a moment of panic decided to give a 24 hour ban to not only those involved in the raid, but everyone online in the guild during that time. Imagine the surprise for the level 5s in the Elwyn Forest just doing some questing, and logging in the next day to find out that they were banned. I guess Hogger was in a bad mood that day. The way Blizzard handled it was lambasted, and it was basically a giant catastrophe. But after the dust had settled, Karate Chop himself received a permanent ban, and the properties of GM items were changed so nothing like that could ever happen again. In the early days of World of Warcraft, everyone hated rogues. I should know, I was a rogue in vanilla. They had a very high damage output, and combining that with stealth made them forces to be reckoned with in PvP. This was when PvP was in its infancy, and there were a lot of balance issues. There were no diminishing returns, crowd control such as sheep could last for a straight minute, and with the rogue having stuns, disorients, and more, it was commonplace to lose control of your character for 30 seconds or even minutes at a time while you were stuck in a seemingly infinite lock of stuns, disorients, and silences. This was the spotlight in the World of Roguecraft series of videos made by the player Mute. These were a series of videos showing just how strong rogues were giving the following two conditions. A. You were good, and B. You had your cooldowns. Given these two things, what would you say if I said that you could beat anyone in the game? What would you say if I said you could do it naked with just a level 1 white dagger? Well, these videos showed just that. A naked rogue taking out not only just random players, but rank 14 Grand Marshals including Mady, who was a pretty popular PvP warrior at the time. Although, there's some controversy about that if it was actually him, or if he sold his account, or whatever. Regardless, the video showed just how good rogues could be given the right circumstances. They caused quite the controversy at the time. People were outraged at how much control rogues had in PvP, Rogues responded saying that they're too cooldown dependent and so on. It was an interesting time in the game where if you were good enough and with the combination of engineer gadgets, you would be able to pull off some amazing things. Nowadays, everyone has a CC breaker, everyone has a sprint, crowd control, everyone has a tool for everything for the sake of balance. Maybe it's healthier for the game overall, but over time, interesting PvP videos like this have vanished. The World of Roguecraft videos, however, are still just as legendary as they've ever been, and I suggest watching them if you want to see an interesting part of the game's history in the realm of PvP. I don't, I don't understand how, like, whenever you hit someone with a, with a, um, you hit them with a hamstring, you figure they're not going to be able to move. How does the hamstring last, like, two to three seconds, but whenever I get hit with a hamstring, it lasts, like, two to three minutes? I don't understand. Like, I don't even understand what it is that I'm fighting. You can consider this one a bonus intermission since I'm not really sure if this is widely known, but this is Tommy, and he's having trouble with hamstring. I can charge him, and as I am charging, I am slamming on my button that only hits hamstring, and I'll miss! As in, not like it swings and misses, I won't get a hamstring off! If my only intent on attacking him is to get a hamstring, how the fuck can I miss it? They just got the flag right underneath of us, and this guy is running three times faster than I am. How the 
You see, back in the day, there was something called charge dodging. The warrior's charge ability wasn't the most reliable, and if you had good timing, if you jumped as they were charging you, you would be out of range before they could actually reach and attack you. This was a PvP tactic used by higher level players to kite warriors more easily. Tommy wasn't a fan of this technique, and he wasn't afraid to let his voice be heard. I don't understand why it is that I get my ass stopped by these fucking coneheads! His woes continued, and his indignation steadily rose. He refers to his opponents as coneheads, in reference to the look of the Alliance's PvP gear at the time. As his hamstrings failed, so too did his patience. I'm gonna run I up. JUST MISSED AGAIN! WHAT THE FUCK?! His rage bar was full, both in-game and out-of-game, and the only thing that got hamstrung that day was his pride. No, this isn't the Bohemian Rhapsody, this is Kungyan. Kungyan was considered the best warrior tank in the entire game during the vanilla and burning crusade days. He was a Swedish player, and initially the leader of the hardcore raiding guild, Nihilum. This was one of the best, if not the best, raiding guilds of Vanilla and the Burning Crusade expansion, claiming dozens and dozens of world firsts throughout their time raiding. Later on, they would merge with another hardcore guild, Curse, to form the Super Guild, Insidia, which would continue to get world firsts throughout the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. Some of his other accomplishments would be obtaining the Scarab Lord title from the old AQ40 event, along with the Legendary Mount. He wasn't really known for a single event like most others on this list, rather just a really good, hardcore player who led an equally amazing raiding guild. Something that really put him and his guild into the spotlight, however, was a Serenite bomb glitch with the Lich King. Insidio was the first guild to kill the final boss of the Ice Crown Citadel, the Lich King, on 25-man difficulty. But to everyone's shock, shortly after, the entirety of the team received a 72-hour ban for exploiting. There apparently was a bug where a consumable engineering item, a Serenite Bomb, would respawn platforms falling around the room. The ban itself was controversial because these bombs were a part of everyone's DPS rotation, so Insidia didn't really know what they were doing or why it was happening. Blizzard observes every world first kill in small groups, and Kungin later alluded that one of the people in those groups knew him from his time playing another MMO, EverQuest and that this person was biased against him and was looking for an excuse to drop the ban hammer. But whether you know Kungyan from this controversy or just from being a very skilled player, you can't argue that he's indeed one of the most famous players of World of Warcraft. From now on, nobody goes AFK, nobody falls the fuck asleep, and everybody plays fucking good or you ain't getting shit! Wait a minute, didn't I just talk about this guy in the last video? Yeah, but hey, come on, he's too good. This guy's the best. He's like a drill instructor for World of Warcraft rating. Why the fuck do I see people where they're not supposed to fucking be? Why do I see people anywhere but here? Are you fucking stupid or fucking blind? There is one Again, this is Dives, the legendary raid leader of the Guild Wipe Club. That particular clip was after a failed Ragnaros attempt in the Molten Core. Dives, for those who don't know, is probably the most angry raid leader to have ever played the game, and when people screw up, he's not afraid to let them know. I don't know if he still plays, but if he does and you join his guild, just remember... Hit it very hard! Speaking of drill instructors, next up we have Shih Tzu of the guild Six Feet Deep on Dragon Ma. Nearing the release of the Burning Crusade expansion, Guilds were ready to take their adventures into the Outland. How would you level? Questing, maybe some instances here and there, or just straight grinding? Well, if you were in the Six Feet Deep Guild, you had less say in it than you thought. In fact, you had no say in it. A 2007 post by Shih Tzu laid down the rules. All members of the guild are expected to level to 70 as fast as humanly possible. If you want to quote experience the content, please do so after you have reached 70 or on another character. Here is how we will be leveling. You will log into the game and look for an officer. One of the officers will assign you to a five-man group. The five-man group will run the appropriate instance level over and over again until someone has to leave, at which point an officer will assign a replacement. No questing, no BGs, no grinding solo, no trade skills, no farming, and no checking out new races. 
If you're online, you will be expected to participate in one of the groups running five-man instances. The only exceptions to this will be if there are not enough people for you to group with and etc. There will be plenty of off hours of downtime to goof off if you wish, but during game time, I swear to thrall I will g-kick your ass if you're screwing around with stupid shit instead of participating in the leveling grind. Dang, he name dropped thrall, that's serious business. This was posted to the forums where he was widely mocked, and in response, he said that six feet deep members are treated more like prized athletes than kids. It's my job to provide clear instruction and focus so that our team is all on the same page, working towards the same goal. It's called leadership. For this next one, I want you to think of anything you can do in the game. What is the most evil or offensive thing you could possibly do? Ninja looting, going dives mode, pretending to be a woman and flirting with dudes through a female avatar. Well, how about crashing a funeral? This next one isn't about a person, but rather a guild, Serenity Now, otherwise known as the Westboro Baptist Church, who on one fateful night became the most hated guild on their server, Illidan. Someone in a horde guild sadly had passed away, and her guild thought it would be appropriate to hold an in-game memorial for her. They posted on the forums, picked a location, and gave a time when the memorial would be held. This was all well and good, but there were two problems. It was on a PvP server, and it was the internet. An alliance guild, Serenity Now, saw the post and decided that they would show up, but it wasn't in a show of support. The turnout was very big, and people lined up in front of a pond to pay their respects to their fallen guildmate. While doing so, however, most of them were also dressed up in RP clothes and they didn't have any weapons or armor equipped. Hey now, that would be inappropriate. While all of this was going down, Serenity Now were storming through Fellwood up to Winterspring, and when they reached the memorial site, the most controversial, large-scale PvP battle in online gaming history took place. Arrows went flying, blood was spilled, and jaws were dropped. People were outraged, others thought it was funny, and some quit playing the game entirely out of disgust. I want to remain the neutral mediator here, so I won't give my take. All I know is that this was quite possibly the most controversial thing to ever have happened in not just World of Warcraft, but gaming, period. <laughs> 